Hello there, fellow enjoyers of ridiculous gameplay. Today, I might have the craziest two battles you've ever seen in World of Tanks Blitz for you. And even better, they happened in a row. First one, we have the Bizonte on Naval Frontier. Now, this vehicle is very interesting because it could be a very good single shot gun. But Wargaming had to give it a second shell that makes playing the vehicle more complicated and less enjoyable. So, quite difficult to already pull off with this tank. Now, Naval Frontier is a map where if you have good medium tanks, you can control a lot of the map and take over quite well. However, if you are a AFK medium tank, then you're going to struggle doing that. But that's a spoiler for later. And now, the enemy team is largely up on the hill. I'm just going to aim at the Type 62 here. Um, my heavy tanks, or one of the tank destroyers, they're camping on the heavy side. There isn't going to be anybody over there, which is quite a big problem. The Lorraine is already dead. But obviously, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to push up there and somehow try to help them in a way, because that would just result in my own death as well. Remember, if you help a teammate that then results in your death, then you just made a mistake. You didn't help anybody. So, LT is also dead now too, and it is a 7 versus 5 right here. Again, I have the second shell here, and this is the problem with this vehicle. Once you fire the first shell, and then you get a shot, you either can't fire, or you now have to wait a very long time uh, to simply get that shell back. And I simply decide to get the damage, rather than wait for the shell to be back, because there's nothing to shoot at right now anyway. And that is the problem with this vehicle. Sometimes you can't shoot, even if you want to, because getting the damage means you now have to wait 30 seconds to fully reload your clip and that is just not a good mechanic whatsoever especially on a single shell if you have two shells in an auto uh, reloader with a cuck shell then it sort of makes sense because you can just fire the first two but if you have one shot and then one terrible that's eh, just not fun so i would love the bizonta to be a single shotgun would make it a lot better and i wouldn't really take away anything from it either and now three versus five this is not a good situation right here um obviously i'm still full hp and that's also very important you don't want to be low hp um at the end of the battle in a situation like because the ammo is full hp the scorpion g is now 300 which means i still can't one shot them. the object is almost outside of two shot range and uh here this yo as well and here's the problem right i can fire the two shots but now i have to wait so long to get that shell back it would be a lot better to be a single shot gun obviously i wouldn't have two shots into him but i could have already reloaded and then put that in as well i'm just gonna have to wait luckily the yaw is going around the other side and uh, now my goal here is get as many kills as quickly as possible right it's a two versus five i have to get this kill but if i don't get it i'm screwed now luckily tiger has done a lot of work on the ammo which is very useful now is a 1v5 right here and you ask yourself how the hell can one win this and i can already answer that question you can't but not in the way that you might think so now we're gonna have to go and i'm gonna have to wait here to wait for that shell to happen and he almost disappears behind uh, a rock so now one this is four reload that second shell i'm gonna need that for the ammo because the ammo has three round clip I'm gonna have to high roll here with 304 and there we go i get him and now again to wait all that time for the reload to come in the scorpion g probably gonna jump down he is the number one priority here basically to take out first because obviously he has the higher dpm he has the less hit points so it, taking out him is very important here and again i have to wait here for the shell to come in and uh there you go. I have to wait. And now, now I can shoot. There we go. And I have to wait again. Now, the object 252 is in the perfect position to actually simply take me out. And low roll with his alpha damage. Damn. He didn't make it. 24 hit points remaining. And where is the last guy? Where is the Brigetto at? I'm in a 1v1 right now. And there is no sight to be seen of the Brigetto. And he bounces off the rear. Oh my god. And then I screw it up again with this shot. And I have to wait another 15 seconds. This is annoying as hell. Now I'm just going to play around the Scorpion. The Scorpion died in the perfect position right there to be used as extra food. And now obviously what I'm going to do and try to reload the second shell here as well um, to get that back. I have two opportunities. I could use heat here, but I'm going to eventually have to go around. And now 24 HP. I'm going to back off. 
try to get unspotted or try to guild him into a mistake, right? Because he's sticking out here. Now I can first one fails, HE, but I can just fire the second one here. And he's dead. Alright. Ah. Whew. Way too many times firing the second shell. Way too lucky. And now, where the hell is that Progetto? I don't know where he is. I don't know if he's AFK in spawn. I don't know if he's AFK anywhere else. And I don't want to take that risk. So I'm just going to sit here and cap the base this entire time. Whew. That was a game. I mean, the enemy team played this somewhat okay. I mean, the Yor should have waited. The Emil should have waited. If they would have all gone together, it would have been impossible for me to actually win that. Only the Scorpion G and the Object 2 have to you played together somewhat. And even they got unlucky in the end. 2 have to you with his ro low roll and then him bouncing off the rear. And the honestly, the Scorpion could have also played it better by just going around the side instead of jumping in front of me. So there's, there's that. So overall, terrible team play there by the enemy team. They came at me. Pretty much at once, the Yor first, then the ammo, Scorpion G, and the object, they did play together, but from the wrong side. Like, I could still fight them at the same time. Scorpion should have gone around, that, which means that if I want to fight Scorpion, I have to turn like 180 degrees to get to the other tank, instead of like 12. So, if you are in a 1v2 situation, don't fight from the same angle, and if you are the one in the 1v2 situation, make sure you only fight one tank at a time, and also... Make sure that if you have multiple tanks, they're all in front of you instead of one behind, one in front, all that. But now the cap circle reaches 100, and I win the battle. Friendly team captures the base, but here's the Progetto, and he shows up, and he kills me. I have captured the base. The Progetto woke up at the very last second. He killed me at 100, but because I died, I still lost the battle. That is insanely stupid. But it happened, which is just insane. And now... The very next battle. KPZ-70 right here on... I don't even know what this map's called. But it is very complex, right? There's a lot of angles on this map. KPZ-70. This used to be one of my favorite tanks all the way back when it came out. But now it's just kind of fallen down a bit. I don't really care about it anymore. But it is still a relatively decent vehicle that works quite well. Now, I'm going to go, unfortunately, have to go here to the heavy side because... One of our medium tanks, he's going heavy side, and I don't want to risk with a vehicle as slow as this, going over there, having the entire enemy team being over there, and then getting caught out and dying. So I can't simply risk that. If the rest of my team would have been smart, could have gone to the medium side, but unfortunately that is not the case. And obviously all three enemy mediums are now fighting our two guys, which probably should have gotten out faster. Uh, but now, we gotta see. There's four guys over there. So maximum of three. E75, your and the 777 that's the maximum here fire at a tank that doesn't fire at me like e find the easiest target the guy's not looking at me he's not a threat to me i'm gonna shoot him right you always want to find the easiest target that's the easiest to approach that's not actually fighting back right like this guy here he's he can't shoot me from the way he's positioned so i can just simply aim at him and i will be completely fine i don't want to put myself into a position where i'm actually at a disadvantage Right. Why would you want to put yourself in a disadvantage on purpose? You always want to be in a position that is an advantage to you. So here, D-75 is again not looking at me. So I'm going to again just simply fire at his turret. Obviously, he's capping at the rear in E-75. A stock E-75 on top of that. So he's not going to be a threat in any case unless I'm a one-shot. The 777 gets taken out by the, the remainder of the team. And now, this is a big problem. Because we've got two guys camping. Two guys on my team, including a heavy tank, are camping. And uh, there's a TVP. He came back, and now he's the threat. So the E75, he's a one, like he's a one shot. He's stock. It doesn't matter. So I'm gonna try to focus on the TVP here, take out the big threat because he can do over 1,200 damage in a single clip. So E75 can barely pen me. So now I'm gonna be very careful. I think that the Yaw is gonna move back here. The enemy team is coming over to our side. Now the Yaw. He's making a mistake again. I peeked him while he was not looking at me. That's what you want to do every single time. Three versus five. Once again, is this going to turn into a 1v5 as well? Stay tuned. And if you're enjoying it so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. And tell me down in the comments what you would have done in this situation. Because that's always interesting as well. Now what I'm going to do here again. I'm, I know the E75 is back there, but the yours the actual threat. And I get super lucky here. Like the object 252 bouncing off me in the last battle, 
the yaw simply just dies. And now, three versus one, basically, because that TVP, he's not going to live very long. I know that your 75 that's behind me right now. I don't care about it. I'm going to put a shot into the T95, focus on that. So, bear with me. Stop the video right now. Who's the threat? Who should I focus on? Well, if you guess the Leopard, then that's exactly what is correct. The E-75, I can kill him easily. He doesn't have a good gun. He's slow. Like, he's not going to be a threat to me, especially when I'm full HP. The T-95 is way too slow to actually catch up with me. I can get away from him easily. But the Leopard has higher DPM than me and is faster than me. He can easily take me out. But the E-75, he just tries to peek over the hill. So I'll take the easy kill. And now, what is important here is get the Leopard away from the T-95. I don't want to give both of them the opportunity to play together because the T-95 is hella slow, the Leopard is hella fast. Leopard can get after me, T-95 can't. So, I lost a lot of hit points here, not really optimal. Um, but now I know where the Leopard's gonna be, right? He's driving that way, so I'm gonna preempt this angle. And there you go, put the AG into him. Prediction, prediction, prediction. You gotta know what the enemy thinks. If you know what the enemy thinks, you can easily outplay them. And then the Leopard bounces right off me. Now, here I have a problem. I have to sort of get after the Leopard to get away from the T95. But the T95 can shoot this angle right here. And there he is. And he puts a shot into me. 439. He is stalked. And now he is the Leopard. And boom! How the hell did that even hit? No reasonable person would have ever taken that shot. But I'm not a reasonable person. I don't play this game for top stats or highest performance. I play this game to shit on people and have fun. That's what it's about. I don't care about my w and at the end of the day. I care about hitting shots like that because it is fucking entertaining. So, and also outplaying people because that's just enjoyable, right? Like trading face to face, it's just not fun. But outplaying a person driving around them, shooting in the back, that's fun. So now we have a T95 and I'm a one shot, which is very bad, but the T95 has a crucial disadvantage. He's a T95, which means he's incredibly slow. And even though this is a heavy tank, it can go at 40 kilometers now, which is pretty much double than he can. So my goal here is, again, get the distance, right? Distance is power in this game. If you're far away, well, obviously, it's harder for you to shoot the enemy, but it's harder for the enemy to get to you to close the distance. And while the enemy is spending time closing the distance, you can take shots at them, for example. Now, here he's capping, which is... Already a mistake, because I know exactly where he is, but that's the best thing he can do. He can't even cap on time anymore. But what I want to do here is take as much time as possible to be at an angle that he's definitely never going to be expecting. Now I'm going to have to be careful here, because uh, uh, see, I stop here to see if I'm spotted. And I'm going to drive back here, because that little hump could be enough to elevate my turret up high enough to be able to T95 to spot me. So I'm going to drive around that little hump, know the map. That's another very important thing. Obviously, this doesn't work without having all the game and tank knowledge in the world. Um, but, yeah, if you want to own people, you got to bring the money. So, here's the 95. He's spotted. He's turning the other way. He still hasn't seen me. And, unfortunately, that HE didn't quite work. But, why did I shoot HE there? Because if I fail it, I can still one-shot him later. Because shooting him in the back, he doesn't have enough armor. And uh, if I don't fail it, I can pretty much HE him again. Uh, and then kill him then. Now, I, I do the old trick. Drive one direction and then turn around. Now, I don't want to do this too quickly here. There's 20 seconds left. I want to use all that time. Use all the time and space that you're allowed to have. Right? Use all of it. If you have time, if you have space, use it. Otherwise, you're just wasting it. Now, I turn around. I go back. And of course, he expects me to be where I last drove. Because he didn't know that I was turning around. He didn't know that I'm the one controlling the engagement and if you're the one controlling the engagement you can too do games like this one with a bit of luck of course but with that said thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe goodbye